Uh, President's Council, uh, there was also a collapse of the law fraternity. We saw behaviors which we would have never thought we would witness in, in our lifetime because the law fraternity was so uh, uh, sanctimoniously sacred because they were basically looking after, you know, they, we had presidents who were misusing uh, the law and they stood up against that and they wanted to make sure that the constitution will be taken care of. And the behavior we saw from the law fraternity um, is that apparently statements were made saying that you can go ahead, break the law, it's okay, we will take care of you later on. That kind of a, a narrative which we, we couldn't believe, like people who were uh, following the law, who was basically hoping for a society based on, on, on a constitution that is, that is developing on a daily, daily basis. To see that, what is your assessment um, being part of that entire fraternity? No, 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 no. I'm not part of that fraternity. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, what's the issue? You see, what those lawyers did, did not reflect the position of the Bar Association at that time, even though the president was involved, right? I think that at one point of time, even members of the Bar rejected that and said, these are not our decisions, but the decisions of an executive committee and not the Bar Association, you know? Nobody really agreed with that type of activity because you, know, you can't be clapping and uh, garlanding these drug addicts and all these chaps who come out of the uh, out of this court just because they were in the Aragalia. So that was that I would say basically in diplomatic language a bit incorrect. <laughs> in undiplomatic language I can say something else. <laughs> I may have to bleep it here. <laughs> <laughs> delete that, right? <laughs> We are the other, what is the other question? We are not, I am not part of it, not only that, 99% of the lawyers were not part of that supportive But the, that, that's the situation. thing, now people like us, what we see on social media, what we hear from the news, the uh, voice cuts we see is being projecting that apparently that 99% is also with that 1%. Oh, what rubbish, 99% were against it, there were about 10 or 15 people who were jumping up and down there. That does not represent the legal fraternity. How, how can we restore the trust in uh, uh, the legal field? Because people think that apparently you have loopholes here and there within the constitution, you can break it and you can slowly fall back on those things. What is your opinion on that? If the legal system was falling apart for a long time. Now it is falling apart at a much accelerated rate, you know, because uh, that matter is entirely up to my learned friend, Mr. Rani Vikram Singh, His Excellency, the President. If he, he can stop it, if he wants to do it, you know. You see, one thing I must tell you, there is this parliament, you find these chaps are shouting, saying that Rani Vikram Singh came from the back door of parliament and all sorts of things, and that type of offensive statements, you know what I mean? I am not a Ranilian, right? <laughs> I am not a Ranilian, I am not a Ian anyway, right? But I will tell you this, Ranil Vikram Singh uh, did not come into parliament to the back door of parliament. He walked into parliament to the front door of the constitution. That is what these uh, chaps in parliament must understand before they make these allegations, you know. He, the, when the, when there is a sudden vacancy in the presidency, the next president by operation of law is the prime minister. And that is how Ranil Vikram Singh became the president. No, he didn't come to the back door. He came to the constitution, the front door of the constitution. So that time I must explain to these people who are making these you know, unnecessary statements in parliament, right? So that is one matter. You see, where the law and order situation is concerned, I, yesterday I saw Vidyadha Rajapaks, Honorable Minister of uh, Justice. He said something like this, you know. He said that there are 1,100,000, 11 lakhs of cases pending in the courts now. In the criminal field, one third are rape cases and child abuse cases, child abuse cases, right? He said there are 4,312 child abuse cases and 5,550, sorry, 4,312 rape cases and 5,550 child abuse cases, right? So that is the situation now, but of course that will be, that, that will be uh, with all the pending cases which started a long time ago, which have, there have been certain delays now. You see, the, the main problem that we are having now, right, is the fault of the executive 
presidency and the executive because the executive is the branch which carries out the law right they are the people who carry the, that is what you call the rule of law the rule of law is the people who carry out the law that is the depa various depa if you take the criminal side right now ranveer kumar singh is the head of the executive right then you find the police departments then you find the other also all investigative departments right are part of the executive so they carry out the law by making arrests and you know uh, getting shot and all sorts of things and you know they they make their arrests and they bring the matter before court right the business of the court is equality before the law equality before the law is quite different from the rule of law equality before the law is the business of court that is equality before the law means that the courts when they decide on issue they shall not give uh what do you call uh, unnecessary advantage to one party and an an or necessary advantage to another party that is what you call equality before the law it must be balanced you know no favoritism on either side yeah, yeah. that is up to the that is the business of court but now see the situation and the police officers you know now there is a lot of stories about police corruption and all those things you no know? we leave that aside right the police people you now risk their lives right by getting catching all the drug people now drug addiction and drug trafficking is the biggest problem that is that is facing the country now right now no yes the first i saw new drug has come the unknown to the whole world is yeah, yeah, like mc yeah. mc4 something or the other yeah. so i hope they will amend the law now to bring the uh, law in, on par with the drugs because otherwise they can't even be demanded <laughs> what i mean <laughs> this particular law doesn't apply right so now that is found is a multi millionaires house or something or the other that defect right so now they have been caught no Now all the drug raids that were done during the past ten years, only one case came before the trial at Bano. You know, that is three hundred and seventy kilograms of heroin. Ah, uh, that ended up in an acquittal, right? That was due to various police uh, contradictory police entries. Right? Remember one thing, right? Remember that the fact that a man is acquitted of a crime does not mean that he committed it, right? Sorry, that does not mean that he did not commit it. The fact that a man is acquitted of a crime doesn't mean that he didn't commit it. The fact that a man is convicted doesn't mean that he committed. There are, it's a, it's a, it's a balance, you know. You can get out of uh, through technicalities. You can get out. Uh, you can be guilty yet be acquitted, right? Now I think the vein of the judgment in that uh, trial of the case was that they. believe that these people were guilty but due to their technical situation they were unable to do so to give do the you, permission do you uh, see what how do you assess 2022 to 2023 with regard to your field where where do we stand are we are we in a position where we are you think there is promising uh, steps taken that would rectify the law or there is nothing in the law to rectify the law is very clear If you are if you are if you are caught trafficking drugs, then you are convicted, uh, and you are appeal, appealing this, you are hanged. That's all. <laughs> the, the law is extremely clear. Any person who is convicted then of that. Then what happens, sir? Huh? If it was that is why I said it is up to the president, Mr. Anil Kumar Singh. It is up to go to Abhay Raj Bhavan. It is up to Chandrika Kumar Singh, uh, uh, Excellency. At that time, up to my tribal citizen, an Excellency. At that time, who saw that is going to hang poor people? Who saw? Before uh, during the election campaign, he said, "I am going yeah, to hang yeah, four yeah. people," and he signed the death warrants. And the Supreme Court, of yeah, course, yeah. bounced it on a different, on a technical basis. But nothing happened. No, the last hanging on 1976, right? That is, I think, Marusira. Okay. After that, there is something called the so-called moratorium. No, the jury, the law is there, but de facto, it doesn't happen. Why? So you see, the problem. No, the problem with this, no. <laughs> As it is now, you all these human rights organisations, these peripherals and uh, uh, Amnesty Internationals and all those organisations, right? I, they talk only about the rights of the convicted person or the prisoner or the suspect. They never talk about the rights of the children whose whose human rights are destroyed. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. 